I swear sometimes this recorder takes forever to launch, so I'm sorry. Um, I'm watching this and uh, it's got a lot of strength back above things, but we're at an area that can really give us a bounce down. So I'm watching this just like everything else. It may turn around uh, and bounce up from here. But I'm anticipating it to be something a little more like this. And I'm not going to let this go very far and come back against me if it is. I literally had just, this is kind of my thing. I sit down in the morning, I'm like, oh, there's a trade. But it had the double bar, it pushed down, it pulled back, so I got right in. Now, I know it's going into the areas on the 610. I don't let those areas have as much weight as they do in the higher time frames. So here, I am anticipating a little bit more of a push down. I know the MACDs aren't turning just yet, but I'm, I'm anticipating this push down just a little bit. The BBs are pushing down here each time as the price is just sitting there. Um, I really don't want to move my risk, I mean my target, just in case it doesn't uh, follow through. I'm going to move it down just a couple ticks. Now that it's pushing down. Alright, I'm going to go a couple more. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take that out. Although you see what happened with that bar, it pulled back and then pushed down really hard, really quick. So. I think I just got two points off of that one. Yeah. All right. Oh. All right. It's got, ooh, yeah, there we go. It just pulled back a little bit and it's pushing down harder. Now I'm looking at these MACDs. They've gotten above the zero line with a ton, ton of strength. So I was anticipating this area to give a pushback, of course waiting for my dog to finish lapping up what sounded like she was drinking an entire freaking ocean which I don't know what it is that triggers them but as soon as I start talking they're like oh I'm hungry and thirsty okay so it pushed down uh, once it reached this area here I was like mm, I don't know if this is gonna continue the small EMA is the large EMA on the next lower time frame so this high time frame EMA is this low time frame EMA so this is the same as right here. They just happen to line up with this one as well. So right in this area. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Uh, so if I put a line here, it's going to show up to match with this one, right? And this highest time frame EMA matches up with this one, which they just happen to be right in the same spot. That doesn't normally happen. And they're all kind of squished together right here, which says to anticipate a change. If that means a change to the upside or change to the downside, I'm not 100% sure yet. I mean, you, you can't see what happened in this one, but you can see it's pulled down it's pulled back the emas were just starting to open up to the downside it's time to drink an ocean mm. So price and MACDs are leading lower here, which might tell me that we're looking for a push down. It's above the zero line here. It's below the zero line here, above the zero line here. So it's kind of that, well, you know, if you let the 610 run you, then you are definitely looking for a short trade, but the 610 doesn't run the world. Oh, and let me give news a little peeps. The housekeepers will be here in 30 minutes, just this freaking time. Kind of want to wait a moment, but pretty sure it's going to. 
<laughs> so it doesn't look like we got anything really. We have we had something at 730 that was medium impact. Besides that, nothing. What's tomorrow? Tomorrow we got a 930 crude oil. Oh wait, that's today. <laughs> Today's Wednesday. 930 crude oil. Existing home sales is in 15 minutes, but that's not a huge mover. Tomorrow, nothing to concern ourselves with. Same with Friday. Like this short feels like the right thing to do here, but it's right here where everything's just kind of dying out as it's getting to the zero line. It doesn't mean that I don't think it might go down. Um, maybe an M pivot. So up and then back down. Um, and just so y'all know, when I'm making these videos, it takes me a little while to post them because I go through and I edit out the pro, like yesterday I had a, a little over an hour long video, which turned out to be, um, 25 minutes because I edit out all the times where I'm just sitting there when I'm typing in the background, when I'm yelling at my dogs to stop barking, when I hiccup, when I you know, cough. I edit out all that stuff just to make your lives better. So I can hear him extra sniffly today. Uh, I was just telling someone that, you know, the, um, I'm expecting this to possibly give the M pivot push up and go back down. You know, so it would be something like this. Maybe that's it right there, but it would, uh, I would definitely anticipate like this whole thing right here to be the pullback and maybe somewhere up in here, or maybe a little bit lower and then the push back down more. This could just beep. So keep an eye on it. It's just a little hard to tell if it's really going to make that shift change to the upside. And I say make that shift change because here we have not fully made that shift change. We've gotten above the zero line, which can happen easily. The zero line can be violated easily. The EMAs can be violated easily. But what I'm really anticipating to happen here is it to pull back and push down. Um, it's had a very weak pullback. But having so far in the if you're putting the price and the MACDs together, um, the push down is extremely weak. These MACDs aren't pushing down at all with this price pulling back really hard. There they go. Now it is. Okay. Here is why I did not take the short trade. Still trying to give us the go ahead on pushing down. This this scene right here, I think I'm gonna need to look a little bit more into to see what typically happens there, but it's pushed up, it's pushed down, it's pushed up, it's pushed down. So you had a decent push down and now it's just kind of hanging out. You know, sometimes above the zero line, it means you can just bounce off and turn to the upside. Sometimes that means it can easily push through. I'm sure some people think I'm a complete weirdo because I'm not taking a long trade. That's all right. I am a weirdo. 
And I love every minute of it. And there it is right there for the short. It really probably could have gotten in right there, but uh, there's something about it that just feels weird. Maybe it's here. Probably going to go from here, but it's going to go without me. What do you see out there, my dear? The way this is pulled up, but this hasn't curved. All right. Let's see if this is just a deeper pull back before it pushes down. I don't like the way the MACDs look now here. I really want to take this short, but I think it's because I'm coming right into the zero line on the 4181 that I'm very hesitant on this. And the kind of strength that we had pushing down has slowed down. It is still pushing down. Mm. I'm just going to be patient. And I would have been stopped out of that one had I taken it. Think here in just a moment. Rolling here below the zero line, rolling off the zero line here. I just there's something that doesn't feel a hundred percent right about it, which you can't on every trade, to be honest with you, you know that. Okay. <sighs> Mm -mm. Okay, I could have very easily chosen a long, then a short, then a long. I do believe this is still going down. I think that I'm about to miss my entry. It's just, it feels very forced. It feels like it's t trying to tell me to go down, but... Um, it's really attempting to go up. Okay. So everything's kind of flat and just going above and below. The EMA is on the 610. It has given me signals for up and for down, for up and for down. I'm starting to really believe that going up is a little bit more uh, what is on the uh, agenda today. Actually, I need to put some EMAs or some uh, lines here so we've got some things to work towards. It's too close. Mm -hmm. And there it finally goes down as I'm creating things. So I'm creating things. <laughs> Is this the push that I've been looking for? Oh. Yeah, it might be. I just don't see how I could have really gotten into that one. I mean, it gave me so many pullbacks into the area. I didn't take any of these. I definitely wouldn't have been in on this one. Oh. Housekeepers are here. All right, so I've completely lost focus, and I'm thinking about going in and getting a new car. <laughs> so I'm going to call it a day. I've already called the dealership. I'm going to go in and check out some things. So... Who knows? Maybe Mama will have a new car in a little bit. Anyways, um, I'm going to go through and edit just a little bit out because I know I had a coughing fit earlier. <laughs> and, of course, as soon as I start talking, now the dog is eating. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I hope you all have a wonderful afternoon. I might be back a little later on. It's only 9.45, but uh, somehow I doubt it. Cars take a while. So, have a great day. Everybody, and peace out. Um, I just wanted to come back and show that the end pivot did end up happening right here and down. So it went a little bit higher than I had anticipated, but it definitely happened. And with the MACDs leading lower on um, the 1597 as it pulled up, the flat EMAs being right at the area on the 4181. It was a great opportunity to take the short, although I was editing my previous video. And I went back to look. I was like, oh man, because there is, let's look right here. As it pulls in here, everything here, everything here, right here. And then actually, I would have never taken that last one, but it is an opportunity. Um, 
here, here, and here says it's time to no longer be in that short trade. All right, so that definitely wraps it up for today, and uh, have a great day, guys.